Welcome to this section of the course on the service value chain. In this section of the course, we're going to be focusing on the fifth major objective for the exam. This states that you have to be able to understand the activities of the service value chain and how they interconnect. Underneath this objective, there are two sub-objectives. It's to describe the interconnected nature of the service value chain and how this supports value streams, and to describe the purpose of each of the value stream activities. That includes plan, improve, engage, design and transition, obtain and build, and delivery and support. So back when we talked about the service value system, we had one inside block that showed us the service value chain. Well, in this section of the course, we're going to break that block open and look at all of those different pieces. As you can see here, we have things like engage, plan, improve, design and transition, obtain and build, deliver and support, and products and services. And all of those are going to work together as part of this service value chain. Now, there's a couple of important things to know when we look at a diagram like this. This is not shown to introduce a linear sequence of events. If you happen to be familiar with IDLE version 3 or the older version of IDLE, we had what we called the service life cycle, and it was a sequence of actions in a linear format. So we would start with a strategy, and then move to design, and then move to transition, and then move to operations, and then we would move to continual service improvement, and we worked through those five life cycles. Here in IDLE 4, we don't do that anymore. This is not a linear sequence. Instead, we normally are going to start with engage, but we don't always have to. And based on that, we're then going to touch into other areas of that interior cube. And as we look at that central cube with the activities in there, we have three major groups. We have design and transition, obtain and build, and deliver and support. These are what I refer to as the central activities inside the service value chain. And these can interact in any order between each other and with the other activities as well. Another important thing to note is this overlap that exists between improve and the other areas of the service value chain. You'll notice that improve is shown in the lower half of this diagram, and there's this overlap of this purple band that goes from improve to improve and engage. You have improve to the activities inside the central cube, such as the deliver and support, the design and transition, or the obtain and build. We have improve and the products and services. All of these are here to show us that feedback loop that exists between each part of the service value chain as it moves through the improvement cycle and the continual service improvement. Now, you also need to understand and manage the perceived value of this service value chain because it's going to drive the demand for the next order, the next product, the next service, or the next iteration of your service relationship. Now, the reason why we call this a service value chain is because all these actions are linked together. So there's a lot of interactions that occur between these different practices. This service value chain activities are going to represent all of the different steps that the organization is going to take in the creation or co-creation of value. Each activity is going to contribute to the value chain by transforming the specific inputs into desired outputs. And so as we take things from demand and opportunity, it goes through that service value chain, getting additional value added and coming out the other side as the value and the desired outcome that we want for our services. That's the way that we're going to be looking at all of this. And so to convert these inputs into outputs, these value chain activities are going to use different combinations of the 34 idle practices that we're going to discuss throughout the remainder of this course. Each activity can draw upon internal or third-party resources. They can look at different processes, different skills and competencies from one or more of these 34 practices. They don't have to be done individually. They can be combined together too. And that's the whole idea here as we start getting these interrelationships through the service value chain activities. All of the incoming and outgoing interactions with all of the different parties that are external to your service provider are all performed through the engage value chain activity. That's why it's one of those first ones that normally occurs. Anytime you want a new resource, that's going to be obtained through the obtain and build activity. Anytime you want to plan something, any planning is going to occur through the plan activity. When you're trying to improve things, that's going to happen through the improve activity. You're kind of getting the idea here, right? All of the different things that we do are going to be binned into one or more of these different buckets. As we create and modify and deliver and maintain and support a component, a product, or a service, all that's going to happen inside that central cube between design and transition, obtain and build, and delivery and support. As we look at our products and services, our demand and our value, these are not considered value chain activities, right? Those go back to our service value system. Those are our inputs and our outputs. So the inside is what we're really looking at here. That's engage, plan, 
improve, obtain build, delivery and support, and design and transition. As we look at those, that is what we're going to be focusing on in this section of the course, and we're going to dive into each one of those in their own separate lecture as we move forward.